Hey, what's going on everybody? Back with another video here. Uh, super excited to talk to you guys about this. Is it garbage? Is it good? Let's talk about it. So um, I was kind of skeptical when I first bought it because I typically don't buy anything under $100 uh, in terms of rods, reels, whatever it is. Um, but it kind of changed on me after I fished it. Um, so I was kind of, I didn't kind of explain why I purchased this in the first place. I was kind of in a market for a rod, um, didn't want to spend too much. I've had, you know, you know, the Mega Bass rods at the time, uh, Gene Loomis and RXs, and I said, you know what, I need something where I don't mind losing um, in the river, you know, because I fish in the Milwaukee River here sometimes, and if I'm wading, this is something that I want to wade with because it's only 50 bucks. So if I lose it, uh, it breaks, whatever, whatever happens to it, guess what, I can buy another one. So that's the reason why I purchased one of these. Um, and uh, I have the seven foot medium heavy one here. This is kind of my um, my wading river rod here. So if anything ever happened to it, uh, you know, I can always get another one, but that's why I purchased it. Um, and how did I like it? I think it's a far darn good rod for 55 bucks. Um, you can catch these on sales too. You can get them even cheaper for 40 bucks, but this is a great rod at a um, really good price that Dio offers here. It offers some good technology in here, like the Braiding X, like you can tell here, the orange Braiding X. Um, has some nice uh, accents here with some of that goldish trims here. It's got an EVA um, butt, EVA foam handle. Uh, it's got a very simplistic handle grip here, which is really nice, nothing too fancy. I like the simplicity here. You get the ability to feel the rod blank. Um, and you have your simple, you know, uh, um, real seat notch, whatever you want to call it there. Nothing too fancy. Um, got some more gold trims there. Got a nice hook keeper. I like this for Texas rigs. Um, that way I don't have to always take off my plastic. And you get the nice dial shot there. Some more accents. And you kind of get this nice, pretty cool tiger brown goldish looking pattern throughout the um, um, half of the rod, I'd say about, about half. Kind of goes through. Got some decent guides in there. Doesn't really say what kind of guides these are, um, but they've held up pretty good. I haven't had any uh, knockout at all. It's got, like I said, it features the braiding X here. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a pretty, pretty darn good rod. So, you know, I'm gonna talk about price point because that's obviously a big thing about this rod. Um, when you go, as rods get more expensive, they tend to become more of a fast action rod, if that makes sense. Um, and that's because those rods have a better blink that offers better sensitivity. When you get down to your uh, more basic, cheaper blinks like this one, um, even though you're fishing like a medium heavy and it's almost like a fax action, it's it still feels more like a moderate in a way. And I think it has to do with um, making up for a, a sensitivity because these don't have a lot of sensitivity in the blank. It's obviously not, you know, the greatest blank in the world because it's only $55. But um, it kind of makes up for it with the action itself. So um, Daiwa was actually nice enough to add uh, another technology on here, which is the Braiding X, which I won't get too much into. Basically, it's, you know, Daiwa's version of High Power X um, from what Shimano offers. And basically, it's just... A wrapping that creates um, that makes your rod more uh, gives them, gives them more power. Okay, um, is this the most sensitive rod out there? No, definitely not. It's it's not anywhere near your high level rods. But is it a good rod? Yes, definitely. Um, this is well worth the money if you're looking for a budget rod that you don't want to break the bank. Um, I've actually picked this up and I fish it on uh, on a boat too as well quite often. Um, 2019, uh, this was my go-to rod, believe it or not. I use this a lot with my Tatula um, uh, SV, uh, which is a nice pair with this. Keeps it ultra light, doesn't have to be too heavy, keeps it basic. The, the grip here is very nice and slim, nothing too crazy here. So I, this is one of my go-to rods and I'll uh, I'll share one of the pictures that I caught with in the tournament time too as well. Um, but I used this rod heavily in 2019. Um, and that's when I purchased it. And I, I really enjoy it. I like it. Uh, if I haven't really dived into any other of the higher end rods, I probably would still fish this rod. But, 
you know, this is a great, like I said, uh, for me right now, this is a great river rod. So if anything ever happens to it, I can always buy another one. Comes with a one year limited warranty, which is pretty cool considering the fact that, you know, you at least get a warranty with something so cheap like this at $55. Um, but it is a really, really good rod. Um, good strength, good sensitivity. It's got a good balance overall. Again, you're not getting the best sensitivity with this, especially because it's only $55. Um, looking into the guides, I do remember actually what they're called there. I think they're called the lightweight aluminum oxide guides, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, it keeps it nice and, you know, it, it's a decent guide. Uh, it's not crazy. Um, it's not cheap either, like some of your, doc, your some of your ducket rods. This actually does have a decent guide with a nice insert too as well. Um, none of my, like I said, none of my inserts have popped out. They're in good quality. Now, um, I, there was one instance where this particular guide kind of shifted a little bit. And what I mean shifted, um, it kind of bent this way. Not that way or that way, but it kind of shifted, like rotated like this way, which is kind of weird. Um, could be a fault of my own. Maybe I stepped on it. I have no idea. Um, but um, I, I just basically kind of pushed it back into place. There's no cracking here. So the epoxy on, on it is really good. The finish is good. The durability is really good. Again, you're not getting a crazy, crazy sensitive rod with this, but you are getting a good quality budget rod. Um, they come in four different models for the casting version. Um, for the spinning version, I don't exactly remember or recall how much they come in, but uh, let me see if I can find out. Three. So they come in three different options for the uh, spinning and they come in four different options for the casting. So the casting, you have a seven foot medium, seven foot medium heavy, which is this one, seven foot heavy, and then you got a seven three medium heavy. So definitely great rods. Tackle Warehouse, this is the most, I think this is the best selling rod, especially because for the price. So if you're looking for a really good rod that you don't want to break the bank, um, this is a great option. It could definitely be arguably in the $100 range. I think I would still purchase this if it was 100, but 55 is just a great uh, price point for this. And uh, if you want to try something different without breaking the bank, if you just want to rod just to have, or if you're entry level into bass fishing and you kind of want to get your first bait cast or you want to get a nice spinning rod without having to spend a lot of money, this is a great option. So check it out. Um, they have them available on Tackle Warehouse right now. Uh, it's a great rod for the money. Again, it's nothing crazy, but at the same time, you get a lot of good uh, you get a really good quality made rod from Daiwa. Uh, if you guys have any specific questions about it, let me know. But this right here is a Daiwa Iridex. Definitely a great budget friendly rod for anybody who's looking for one. But hey, appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video.